Hello, I'm Dr. Clemens Budde, and I'm a nephrologist who specializes in treating patients with TSC. Now I would like to share my experiences with you. In TSC, the most common renal manifestation is angiomyelopoma, or AML. I have found that AML is often discovered through an incidental finding, like a CT scan, or as a result of an emergency bleeding situation. However, a doctor may order a kidney ultrasound to directly assess a TSC patient for AML, since it is so prevalent in this population. In fact, in my experience, about 70% of patients with TSC will develop an angiomyelopoma, and I see onset typically occurring during the teenage or adult years. The clinically significant problem with any AML is the bleeding that may occur. Renal cysts are the second most common type of renal manifestations in people with TSC. About up to 35% of TSC patients have renal cysts. Interestingly, the polycystic kidney disease gene, or PKD gene, was discovered in a patient who had gene defects in both TSC2 as well as PKD1 genes. Actually, these genes are located right next to each other. So if there is a gene defect at the lesion that spans from one of these genes to the next, then both diseases are present. And so it is possible that patients with TSC renal cysts may also have polycystic kidney disease, which can eventually lead to end-stage renal disease. Renal cell carcinomas are considered rare, although there is controversy about their prevalence. And this may be because, from a histology perspective, AMLs may have signs of malignancy, like mitosis and vascularization, which may cause them to be confused with carcinomas by pathologists. For people with TSC, Having AMLs and or polycystic kidney disease can result in renal failure and may even cause death, although it's rare. In fact, when we look at the death rates for patients with TSC, we find renal causes are among the most frequent, right behind neurologic complications. Unfortunately, as in many other diseases, it has been my experience that when there is renal involvement, there are usually inferior outcomes when compared to patients with no renal involvement. TSC is such a rare disease that many physicians are unfamiliar with it. And without awareness of TSC, I think it's difficult to make the differentiation between AMLs in patients with TSC and the typical AMLs mentioned in routine radiology conferences. So by familiarizing themselves with the manifestations of TSC, physicians will be able to make a diagnosis and refer patients to appropriate treatment facilities.